Scientists are very optimistic that they're going to find a cure for genetic disorders, but this is impossible yet. Today, we're learning about two genetic disorders, cystic fibrosis and polydactyly, and how to screen for genetic disorders. People who have the genetic disorder polydactyly will have extra fingers or toes. Part of the word poly actually means many, like a polygon is a many-sided shape. It is caused by a dominant allele. This means people only need to have one allele to get the disorder. Cystic fibrosis is a disorder of the cell membranes. The cell membranes struggle to move substances around, which leads to thick mucus building up in places like the lungs. It is caused by a recessive allele, which means you need two recessive alleles to have the disorder. If a person just has one of the recessive alleles, they don't have the disorder, but we call them carriers. You may be asked to use Punnett squares to work out the probabilities of offspring inheriting these disorders. We'll start with a parent that has got polydactyly because they've got the dominant allele for it. We'll then have them crossing with another parent that doesn't have polydactyly because they don't have the dominant allele. Let's do our combinations by reading down and across and then we'll work out what genotypes we've got. So we can see that we've got 50% big D, little d. And we've got another 50% of little d, little d. The phenotypes, or the physical characteristics, are then 50% polydactyl because they've got the capital dominant allele, and 50% normal. And as a ratio, this is 1 to 1. Now let's look at a cystic fibrosis example. Let's start with a person that hasn't got cystic fibrosis and they have no cystic fibrosis alleles. Then we'll have another parent who does have cystic fibrosis. When we do our combinations, we can see that for our genotypes, all of the offspring would have big C little c, 100% probability. As big C little c has a normal dominant allele, they are 100% normal or non-cystic fibrosis. Couples with a history of a genetic disorder in their family may be offered genetic screening. This is when cells from the embryos are taken and screened or tested for specific disorders. If the tests show that the embryo has a genetic disorder, the parents will make a decision whether or not to keep the baby or whether to terminate the pregnancy. There are of course many complex issues with this. You need to be able to make judgments using information given. So don't worry too much about memorizing these. First of all, with economic issues, is that screening is very expensive and currently only offered to those with a family history of disorders. Some people think every couple should be offered it, while others think the money could be better spent somewhere else. However, supporting a family with a child affected by a genetic disorder is also very expensive. Now we'll look at the ethical issues. Collecting cells from an embryo can increase the risk of a miscarriage, whether or not the baby has the disorder. And occasionally, the test can give a false positive, saying the baby has a disorder when it hasn't. It can also be a false negative, saying the baby doesn't have the disorder, but when it is born, it does. And of course, once a couple has the screening done, they face their own ethical decisions on whether or not to have an abortion. Finally, social issues affect us all. People are concerned that genetic screening could create a demand for designer babies, which is when they're chosen for their certain characteristics. Okay, we're going to pause and try some questions, then press play when you're ready to go through them. 1. What is polydactyly? This is a genetic disorder caused by a dominant allele. Sufferers of this disorder will have extra fingers or toes. Two. Is cystic fibrosis caused by a dominant or recessive allele? It's recessive. 3. This is higher question only. Draw a Punnett square to show the probability of two carriers of cystic fibrosis having a child with the disorder and give the expected ratios for phenotypes. Okay, well, let's just check. Carriers means that they have got one recessive allele and one normal non-cystic fibrosis allele. 
So when we do our cross for this, it'll look like this. And if we work out our genotypes, we can see that we've got 25% big C, big C, 50% big C, little c, and 25% two little c's. For the phenotypes then, anything that has got a big C will be normal, which is 75%. The last 25% then is two recessive alleles, which gives you cystic fibrosis. As a ratio, this is three to one. All right, how did you do? Family trees are a really useful way to learn about inheritance of genetic disorders. Click here to see how they work and here to subscribe if you're finding this useful. Thanks and bye.